Okay, let's uh, continue from where we left last time. Um, okay, so we will work at one loop. And suppose uh, we get the following integral from some, um, some Feynman diagram that you are calculating at one loop which is integral d4 k over 2 pi to the 4 1 over k square minus delta plus i epsilon square whereas I have repeatedly said um, delta will be a function of the external momenta actually the dot products okay, these are all Minkowskian of the masses that appear okay and uh, and the x size the Feynman parameters or uh, because this could be different let us put j okay so you do this suppose you have to integrate uh, this one you see that this is divergent in ultraviolet region because you have 4 powers of k in the denominator k square square and 4 powers k in the numerator okay so this will diverge logarithmically if you were to put a cutoff lambda okay let's see how uh, things work out when you are doing dimensional regularization okay so this is uv divergent and we call it logarithmically divergent Okay, when one says something is logarithmically divergent or quadratically divergent, one is uh, imagining a cutoff. Okay, because if you use dimensional regularization, you are not going to get a logarithmic dependence on the cutoff. You are, we'll see what you get. Okay, but it will not be logarithmic. So the moment you say logarithmic or uh, quadratic, these things are, um, uh, these statements assume that you are working with a cutoff regulator. Okay, so what we'll do is to evaluate this because this is divergent; it's infinite. Um, uh, we see no, no matter what I do to this integral, it remains infinite. Okay, so I do a regularization and go to d equal to four minus two epsilon. Okay, where epsilon is positive. Okay, so when epsilon goes to zero you recover this integral okay in that limit so epsilon is some positive number so that the number of dimensions are lower than 4 because 4 minus 2 epsilon is something small okay there is no it is not necessary that you put this 2 okay you can work with 4 minus epsilon also it is just a choice that i have made okay but if you don't like you don't have to okay so with this your integral becomes the modified integral or the regulated integral becomes d4 minus 2 epsilon over 2 pi to the 4 minus 2 epsilon okay 1 over k square minus delta plus i epsilon square okay and now this integral is convergent because number of dimensions is less than 4 okay okay so let's uh, evaluate this to see explicit form of the singularity in epsilon going to 0 limit okay, or d going to 4 limit. So, we have evaluated this integral al already okay, and I am um, just going to put uh, d equal to 4 minus 2 epsilon in the result. So, let us go back and see somewhere here I should have that result. What happened? Um, animation timeline yes I can check this one okay. 
डी डी के और टू पाई डी वन ओवर के स्क्वायर माइनस डेल्टा प्लस आई एफ टू द एन सो कैपिटल एन हेयर इन इन द प्रेजेंट इंटीग्रल दैट आई एम इवेल्युएटिंग एन इज टू विच मीन्स यू हैव टू फाइनमेंट प्रोपोगेटर्स इन द इन द डायग्राम एंड डी आई हैव पुट फोर माइनस टू एफ सेलन सो आई टेक दिस रिजल्ट एंड पुट डी इक्वल टू फोर माइनस टू एफ सेलन ओके एंड एन कैपिटल एन इक्वल टू टू दैट्स वॉट आई एम डूइंग Um, okay, I, I will not copy and paste it there. You can uh, verify that what I am doing is correct. Okay, so in that formula that I showed to you, I'll put d equal to four minus two epsilon. So i times it has a minus one power capital N. So capital N is two. This two. Okay, this one. um then you have 4 pi power d which is 2 minus epsilon uh, sorry d over 2 which becomes 2 minus epsilon okay then you have gamma of uh, let me show you again so in the numerator you have gamma of capital n which is 2 minus d over 2 d over 2 is 2 minus epsilon okay So two minus two that cancels and it leaves only epsilon, okay? Because mi this minus uh, cancels the minus epsilon uh, you get, so that makes it uh, gamma of. I've missed one factor. I want to write that one before that. So this, and then you have um, no, everything was fine. Everything was good. Um, what did I remove? Yeah, gamma of epsilon, and then in the denominator you have gamma of capital N, which is gamma of two. Okay, and then we have one over delta minus i epsilon, and you'll see that it's useful to keep this. I epsilon, okay. And this exponent becomes epsilon, okay. It, it had the same argument. The the power here was the same as the argument of gamma function, and that is why they both are epsilon. Okay, now gamma two is one factorial, which is one. So that is what I will put. And um, this thing I can write as. I over four pi square. Okay, now I'm still left with left with four pi to the minus epsilon. Okay, which goes in the numerator and becomes four pi to the epsilon. But I also have this one over delta one uh, delta minus epsilon, so I will include it here. Okay, and then you have gamma of epsilon. All the kinematic dependence is contained in delta, okay. And this, uh, what you remaining things depend on epsilon only. Okay, so where is the singularity in all of this? When I put epsilon to zero, of course, this factor is non-singular. Something to the power zero is one, so that's not going to give you any divergence. The singularity is in here in gamma of epsilon. So we should know then how gamma function behaves near. Uh, Zero. Okay. So how gamma z behaves when z approaches zero? Because that's the limit we are interested in. And here is the result. Um, um, maybe I should, yeah, here itself. So gamma of epsilon behaves as one over epsilon minus Euler gamma. This is again a gamma. It's called Euler gamma plus terms that are order epsilon. Okay, so you see that it is singular as you already know, and the uh, behavior is like this. Okay, gamma of epsilon is one over epsilon minus Euler gamma, where um, Euler gamma is a number which is zero point five seven seven two. Okay, and 
of course you have more terms more more, more num uh, digits in this and then um, you have terms which are order epsilon okay so you see that this integral this integral at one loop with two propagators the Feynman diagram having two propagators okay it's going to give you a pole uh, a simple pole because gamma of epsilon is going to give you 1 over epsilon so it provides you a simple pole okay so what looks like as a logarithmic divergent thing when you use a cutoff is appears as a simple pole when you use dimensional regularization okay so let's put this here i over 4 pi square okay um, 4 pi over delta minus i epsilon this epsilon is different okay and this epsilon is different maybe i should use uh, i let's this is this epsilon which is coming from from Feynman prescription i will write as this one and this one uh, this dimensional regulator as epsilon gamma so what is gamma of epsilon it's 1 over epsilon minus Euler gamma plus order epsilon okay now I should um, work with this expression I will write it again um, so did I give a name to this integral no so let's call this i so i is equal to I have found that it is i over 4 pi square times 4 pi over delta minus i epsilon um, this I wrote already 1 over epsilon minus Euler gamma plus order epsilon ok so this is i over 4 pi square times this one let us expand in epsilon okay uh, in powers of epsilon so the lowest order term is 1 plus epsilon times log of 4 pi over delta minus i epsilon okay and then you have order epsilon square term okay this this expansion i can write easily and then you have 1 over epsilon minus euler gamma plus order epsilon terms Okay, now let us carefully look at all the terms. Okay, let us look at first the order, um, let us look at first the uh, most singular piece. Okay, you have 1 over epsilon. So, the most singular term is generated when you multiply this with the lowest order term in epsilon, which is 1 here. Okay, and there is one way, only one way, so that gives you 1 over epsilon. Now let us look at uh, terms of order epsilon to the 0 okay? because the next uh, the next thing in powers of epsilon is epsilon to the 0 meaning a constant. Okay? So how do you generate that? When you multiply this constant here with that constant there that gives you one such term. So let us write it here minus gamma e and the um, other way you generate it is when you multiply this 1 over epsilon term with the order epsilon term. Okay? So, that will give you log 4 pi over delta 1 minus delta minus i epsilon. So, it gives you log of 4 pi minus log of delta minus i epsilon. So, I will write it separately. Okay? And now any other term that you generate, okay. So th sorry, this is all order uh, epsilon term, uh, order epsilon to the zero terms, constant terms, okay. Constant meaning uh, not constant, but order epsilon to the zero terms. So this is what you have got at this uh, rate, and then you whatever is left is order epsilon terms here. Okay, there are many ways in which you can generate order epsilon terms. For example, by multiplying this epsilon log 4 pi 
with minus gamma that will be an order epsilon term okay so that's that shows you the explicit form of singularity so as i said you get a singular uh, simple pole okay in dimensional in dimensional regularization for the integral that we have looked at and note that no matter what kinematic factors appear here okay in the delta you are going to get in addition to this singularity 1 over epsilon log of 4 pi minus all gamma so that constant is going to appear okay this will this will be of um, uh, we'll have to there will be things which I will be saying later about this constant. So, let us keep it in mind that when you are working at one loop, these constants are going to appear in precisely this combination. Okay? And the kinematic dependencies uh, contained in this logarithm of delta. Okay? And also note that you have delta of minus i epsilon. Okay? So, uh, it is useful to keep this minus epsilon. I did not drop it here. Okay, I have not dropped the i epsilon. So I am being careful in keeping it and now you see uh, why it is useful because see the delta could be a, a negative quantity right because you know that I have instead of using m square when I was in Euclidean space I switched to delta okay because delta is not necessarily positive definite. So, log of you could have log of a negative number here negative quantity here okay depending on the uh, pi's that you have okay. And in that case, it is important to know what is the value of log and that you can know only by knowing whether you are above the cut or below the cut, the, the branch cut of the log. Okay? And for that, you need to know the sign of uh, i epsilon. Okay? You need to know which, on which side you are of the branch cut. And that is why you, you need this i epsilon correctly. And then this is whether minus i epsilon or plus i epsilon becomes crucial. And since we have carefully carried all this, I know that it is minus i epsilon, okay, where epsilon is positive, this epsilon. Okay, so one has to be careful with uh, the arguments uh, of log. So you, you better keep track of the epsilons. Okay, uh, is there anything else? No. So as far as this integral is concerned, this one, okay. When I go to when I use dimensional re regularization and go to epsilon going to zero limit, this is the form of the integral I get. Okay. Now let us look at another integral which you will get, uh, and you know that it is divergent um, with uh, I mean the diagram uh, divergent and has only one propagator. So here I took a Feynman diagram which had two propagators so that I get to this form okay and you we already talked that there is one more integral that will be divergent at one loop okay which you get from uh, tadpole so let me draw that one or, or self energy so second integral let's look at another integral that is divergent at one loop in four dimensions is this one. Here the power is one. Okay, so only one one propagator and previous one was with two propagators and you know that if you have more than two propagators let us say you have three or four or whatever then this integral will be convergent because if you have three here then four powers in the numerator and six powers in the denominator so it is convergent and that is why I am interested in looking at only these two uh, integrals uh, here. Okay. Good so this is what kind of diagram is this? this comes from these kind of diagrams okay only one propagator here 
Um, so this is a self energy diagram. So let's look at what kind of singularity this will give. So going back to the integral here, okay, in this I will put capital N equal to 1 and uh, D equal to 4 minus 2 epsilon. Okay. And I will, this time I will not worry about this, um, th this factor okay, because I have already shown you how to, how to uh, use, how to work with this. So let me just show you the kind of singularity that you get which comes from gamma n minus d over 2. Okay. So n minus d over 2. So capital N minus d over 2 that is the gamma function that you get where capital N is 1 d is equal to 4 minus 2 epsilon. So what do you get? You get um, n is 1 minus d over 2 which is 2 minus epsilon which is minus 1 plus epsilon which is minus of 1 minus epsilon okay so we have gamma of minus 1 plus epsilon that is what appears in this integral which will give you a singularity okay now you might already be aware of that the gamma function uh, though it is analytical uh, it's analytic everywhere in the complex plane except except for except for um, the negative integer values and the origin okay so you see when epsilon goes to 0 this goes to gamma of minus 1 which is singular okay and i can um, easily find out the nature of singularity using the result that i have already given to you where was that this one let me um, Okay, let's try to box this one. No, not sure whether it works. Okay, I've forgotten how to do it. Yes. Okay, good. So, this is what I am going to use now. And another very useful result that you should always remember is this. is this that z gamma z is gamma 1 plus z or z plus 1 let us call it this way okay and I will use this now so I need gamma of minus 1 plus epsilon okay so if I use minus 1 plus epsilon times gamma of minus 1 plus epsilon then it is gamma of minus 1 plus epsilon plus 1. So, that is gamma of epsilon and this one I know. So, from this I can easily determine minus 1 gamma of minus 1 plus epsilon as 1 over uh, minus of minus 1 plus epsilon okay, times gamma of epsilon okay, which is simply minus 1 plus epsilon times 1 over epsilon minus order gamma plus order epsilon square uh, order epsilon terms. Now this uh, denominator okay, it, it will start uh, with 1 or minus 1 and then it will have order epsilon terms. Okay. So expanding this 1 over minus 1 plus epsilon does not change the order of the pole. Okay. So it gives because it starts with 1 and when you multiply with 1 over epsilon it gives you 1 over epsilon. So, you see again that uh, this integral also is uh, giving you simple poles, but if you, you if you had used a cutoff regulator, you will not get a logarithmic divergence right? because this is not log divergent. 
but when you are using uh, these dimensional regulator you are still getting a simple pole okay so singularity appears here also as a simple pole okay and this is because we are working in uh, four dimensions and at one loop if you were to go to higher loops then this will change okay this these will not be simple poles okay and as i said if n is greater than 2 capital n is greater than 2 more number of um, denominators then the integral is converted so i have then uh, exhausted all the um, divergent integrals that are going to appear at one loop in four dimensions okay so i have completed i have completely exhausted that set and now um i will start up looking at um dimensional regularization and uh, how to proceed with that okay and i think i should do it in the next video not in this one um okay fine so let's meet in the next video then